the process for chemical engineering applications to the University of Cambridge have changed. Here's all the details. Hey there, welcome to ChemEng Weekly. From 2023 entry onwards, applications to the University of Cambridge have changed their process, owing to the department being rebranded as the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology. And so there are a number of key things that have changed, including some admissions assessments and also the application deadlines and more. In this video, we will cover the full undergraduate application process for Cambridge Chemical Engineering applicants. So make sure you watch until the end to get all the up-to-date information. And without much further ado, let's jump straight in to the undergraduate application process. All applicants to the University of Cambridge have to apply by the 15th of October deadline, which is much earlier than the normal UCAS application deadline, which is in January. And they have to complete their UCAS application, which includes a number of things as well as a personal statement. We also have a separate video for this in the iCard section right now, called the UCAS Admissions Explained video, which you can find in the iCard and the description right now. Applicants must then submit the SAQ, which is a supplementary application questionnaire, a whole week after the October 15th deadline, by 6pm on October the 22nd. And within this, there's a number of key sections again, as well as a 1,200 word personal statement, which is specific to Cambridge and, in this case, chemical engineering. We also have a separate video on this, which is now in the iCard section and the description too. Applicants to the University of Cambridge for Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology are also required to sit an admissions assessment, and the deadline to register for this admissions assessment is the 30th of September. And this admissions assessment is sat on the 19th of October, but some of these details have been changed, as we will get to in later on in this video. After sitting the admissions assessment, you will receive an interview invite around December time for your chemical engineering application interview. If you have been successful in the first two stages, namely the UCAS application SAQ and your admissions assessment, you will receive up to three invitations to interview. The first usually being a general interview about why chemical engineering, why Cambridge, etc. And the second one being your more technical interview. But in some cases, they won't even do the first interview, they'll jump straight into the second one. The number of interview invites you receive will depend on the college you have applied to or whether you have done an open application. And all colleges will be running their interviews online this year and moving forward, unless you are a UK-based applicant to the University of Cambridge's Trinity College. I have also included a link in the description for tips on online interviews which Cambridge has put up on their official site, so do check that out. After doing your interview in December, you will find out whether you have been successful or not in the last week of January, whereby the college will release specific feedback to you if you ask for it, whether you have been successful or not successful, and then you can make your final decision pending your results, which normally come out in August for A-levels or in July for IBs and other qualifications. And that was the process in a nutshell, but now let's focus on the more important part, the big changes. Under the old system, applicants to the University of Cambridge would either study engineering or natural sciences in the first year, with a roughly 60-40% split with 60% studying natural sciences and 40% studying engineering in their first year, before specialising in to do chemical engineering in their second, third and fourth years. But now this has been scrapped, with a direct entry for all 60-ish applicants who will be successful to Cambridge for Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology to the Department of Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology. And this, in turn, has caused the second change. Previously, applicants to the University of Cambridge for Chemical Engineering would be able to sit the ENGAA or the NSAA, depending on whether they will be studying by engineering or natural sciences. But now it's stricter that all applicants must sit the NSAA before being considered for the next part of the process. The test remains the same as it was from 2021 entry onwards, and the registry deadline has now moved back to the 30th of September. Whilst the test itself is now sat on the 19th of October, two weeks prior to when it normally used to be sat on the 5th of November. And with the test itself, there is now also a change in that chemical engineering applicants no longer have to be restricted to do only the maths and physics or maths and chemistry sections, but now can do the maths and either chemistry, biology or physics in the second section of the MCQs. I've also curated a specific playlist for the NSAA and admissions, which I have linked in this video. So you can click on the iCard section now and in the description too to have a look at that. And the final change that is the biggest change of all is the Cambridge Chemical Engineering interview. In years gone past, you would either get an engineering interview or a natural sciences interview, but now it's quite hard to gauge what exactly they will do now that it's been moved to chemical engineering and biotechnology that will be running the interviews. One thing that you should expect is that if you have one or two interviews, each interview will last 20 minutes to half an hour, and that the first interview will be on a general side, which is something we have covered in the Manchester and Imperial How to Ace videos on our channel, and the other will be the technical side, the technical interview at this point is quite hard to gauge, but the one thing you can be sure of is that they will test you on the subjects you have written down on your SAQ that most relate to chemical engineering. 
namely chemistry, biology, maths and physics, as well as further maths if you study that. Therefore, the best advice that we can give is ensure that you know everything you've written on your SAQ application for the subjects you have studied, as these will be the things that will most likely test you on with a far greater link towards maths, physics and chemistry than biology, for example. You should expect your bread and butter technical interview questions, which I've covered in another video on this channel, but you should expect to have your bread and butter technical questions, which are your graph sketching, your calculus, your integration and differential equations. There will also be questions on chemistry and physics, as I have said, but you should expect these to be taken in a slightly different way, as Cambridge always usually does with their interviews expecting crossovers between maths, physics and chemistry within your questions, such as asking you to work out differential equations and rate equations together, and also working out complex iron formation using matrices. Therefore, there is no actual set way to prepare for these, as they could ask you any sort of crossover questions depending on what you've studied. And so it's best if you just make sure you have a good grasp of all the knowledge you have learned in your school up until this point, including what you're currently learning, as anything can come up in any sort of way. One thing that I should mention though is if you are studying maths and do not study further maths, you should not expect them to use further maths content to test you on as it would be unfair. They will genuinely take each application case by case and test you on the things that you are learning and the things that you should know. All in all, good luck to everyone applying. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed it and leave your comments and suggestions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels and if you click on the on-screen cards now you can watch another one of our videos. Click on the centre card to subscribe and don't forget to share this video if you found it useful. Further information can be found in the description and thank you very much.